Whenever the United Kingdom's Bomber Command was tasked with challenging missions, such as sinking the Bismarck-class battleship Tirpitz, they always knew which aircraft to use, the Avro Lancaster Heavy Bomber. With four Rolls-Royce Merlin engines and a top speed of 287 miles per hour, the aircraft had an impressive lifting capacity as it had a long and mostly unobstructed bomb bay. The aircraft's standard load of 18,000 pounds of explosives gave the United Kingdom the offensive striking power needed to penetrate fierce German air defenses in the European theater and carry out complex missions against the Ruhr Valley dams. Such was the case with Operation Chastise, the most famous Lancaster bomber mission. Performed by a specially formed squadron, 19 Avro Lancasters took off into the skies on the night of May 16, 1943, carrying one of the most unique and dangerous weapons in history. One of a kind. The Avro Lancaster is considered Great Britain's most successful heavy bomber of World War II. The type emerged from the response by A.B. Rowan Company to a 1936 Royal Air Force specification that called for a bomber powered by two 24-cylinder Rolls-Royce Vulture engines, resulting in the company's Manchester. Despite a successful maiden flight and a production contract to enter World War II combat in early 1941, the aircraft's Vulture engine was a failure, and the Manchester was only produced in small numbers. The British company then proposed a redesigned version, now powered by four Rolls-Royce 1460-horsepower Merlin engines, called the Lancaster. After flying for the first time in January of 1941, the model entered production a year later. A mid-wing design, complete with a twin tail, the Avro Lancaster had a wingspan of 102 feet and was 69 feet long. The heavy bomber could reach a maximum speed of 280 miles per hour and a ceiling of 24,500 feet, and it could carry a 14,000-pound bomb load to a range of 1,660 miles at 200 miles per hour. Even so, a shortage of Merlin engines forced the Avro engineers to produce a few Lancasters with Bristol Hercules air-cooled radial engines, and they proved to be much less successful than the initial version. Nevertheless, the issue was resolved with Packard-built Merlins imported from America. Almost all of the more than 7,000 Lancasters produced during World War II were committed to the after-dark strategic bombing of German cities. To perform these missions, the Lancaster's spacious bomb bays generally carried a mixed load of high-explosive bombs, like one cylindrical 4,000-pound high-blast cookie or up to three 2,000-pound explosives, with the balance of the bomb load consisting of smaller incendiaries. Stark Differences Unlike the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, its American counterpart, with a whopping 13 50 caliber machine guns, the Avro Lancaster only had 10 M 1919 Browning machine guns with a thousand rounds each, enough for two minutes of continuous firing. Also, the heavy bomber was operated by a crew of seven, instead of ten like the B-17. A pilot and a flight engineer would sit in the cockpit, with a bomb aimer on his stomach in the compartment underneath, pointing and releasing bombs and operating the front machine gun. Tucked right behind the pilot and flight engineer was a navigator, who was close to the wireless operator that fired the dorsal guns as needed. And rounding out the seven-man crew were the ventral and rear gunner, who were positioned at the back of the plane. Conditions aboard the Avro Lancaster were harsh, as the impressive haulage capacity meant a trade-off in armor plating, and the crews were more vulnerable to enemy fire. In addition, at 20,000 feet in the air, temperatures inside the cramped bomber could plummet as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, potentially leading to frostbite. In early 1942, the Royal Air Force's No. 44 Squadron, based at Waddington, Lincolnshire, was the first to convert to the Lancaster, quickly followed by the No. 97 Squadron. Then, in March, the type's first nighttime bombing mission was conducted over the German city of Essen in North Rhine-Westphalia. Upkeep before World War II, the British Air Ministry began to identify the strategic importance of the German industrialized Ruhr Valley, especially its dams, as potential targets. The dams in the area provided hydroelectric power and water for steelmaking, drinking water, and the canal transport system. According to intelligence calculations, releasing bombs on top of these zones was feasible. However, they required a degree of accuracy that the Royal Air Force Bomber Command had not yet been able to attain when targeting a well-defended area. A one-off surprise attack might succeed, 
but the Royal Air Force lacked a suitable weapon. The answer to the issue was British engineer Barnes Wallace's bouncing bomb, known by its codename Upkeep. An assistant chief designer working for Vickers Armstrongs, Wallace created a 9,000-pound cylindrical mine to bounce across the water's surface and into it. The upkeep weapon would then sink and detonate at a depth of 30 feet thanks to a hydrostatic fuse. Some officials believed it to be too much of a madcap scheme, but despite the opposition, Operation Chastise was given the green light by the chief air staff. For the mission, the Royal Air Force's Bomber Command created the Lancaster-equipped specially formed Unit No. 617 Squadron, led by Wing Commander Guy Gibson. Within three weeks, Gibson assembled all the air crews, ground staff, and auxiliaries needed for the special mission. A total of 23 Lancasters were modified to carry the cylindrical mines, making space in the bomb bay for a special apparatus designed by the Avro team. The Dam Busters Raid On the night of May 16, 1943, the air crews were finally briefed on the details of the upcoming raid. After learning which targets they were supposed to strike, 19 Lancasters belonging to the 617th Squadron lifted off in three waves, one of nine and two of five. The first wave, led by Wing Commander Guy Gibson, was ordered to drop their ordnance on top of the Mona Dam, and if the mission was breached, the Eder Dam, both in the center of West Germany. Moreover, if both targets were breached, any of the other aircraft still carrying mines were to perform the attack on the Sorpa Dam. During the raid, the Mona and Eder were indeed breached, and the Sorpa was heavily damaged, flooding the Ruhr Valley and putting much of the local industry out of action. The so-called Dam Busters managed to achieve an incredible feat without modern computer equipment and using maps, compasses, pencils, and rulers. One pilot described the World War II mission as akin to taking a seven-hour math test in the dark, all while being shot at, and with the additional challenge of having to be flown only a hundred feet off the ground to avoid radar. As with most high-risk missions, Operation Chastise came with a price, as eight of the 19 Special Lancasters dispatched on the Dam Busters raid failed to return. While a similar operation was never attempted, the number 617 Squadron was employed in other, more regular pinpoint bombing sorties between its operational debut and the end of the war. Meanwhile, the surviving G-variant aircraft were remodified back into standard bombers. Radar Oversight Other than its primary bombing tasks, the versatile Avro Lancaster was also used for maritime management and photo reconnaissance missions. In addition, 31 Avro Lancasters took part in the sinking of the German battleship Tirpitz, where they dropped 12,000-pound tall boy bombs on top of the vessel. Some Avro Lancasters were equipped with H2S ground mapping radar from 1943 onwards. The technology then evolved, and they were equipped with improved radar, as well as receivers for radio guidance systems. By the early spring of 1944, radar-equipped Lancasters were bombing the night away with much more accuracy, especially when attacking targets close enough to British territory. Avro Lancasters also played a key role in the preparations for Operation Overlord on June 6, 1944, conducting accurate attacks on rail yards, bridges, and other transportation targets. The tail-mounted Monica radar, however, proved to be a magnet for better-equipped German night fighters with passive radar receivers tuned to home in on Monica transmissions. Despite the massive oversight, Bomber Command did not know of the German homing capability for almost six months, costing many untimely incidents. Retirement. As the war in the European theater drew to a close, the Lancaster was readied for service against Japan as part of Bomber Command's Tiger Force, but the war's end halted this plan. According to the Bomber Command Museum, out of the 7,377 Lancasters produced during the war, more than half were shot. In fact, Bomber Command leadership never developed an effective response to the Germans' radar capabilities. Even so, the Avro Lancaster was by far the most effective United Kingdom heavy bomber of World War II, and the numbers speak for themselves. Between 1942 and 1945, the Lancasters flew 156,000 sorties and dropped 608,612 tons of bombs. After World War II ended, the Lancasters continued to serve as patrol bombers well into the 1950s. Some heavy bombers were even used as engine testbed platforms. As of 2022, 
Only two airworthy Lancasters are left in the world, the last of a long legacy of remarkable aircraft. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed our video about the iconic Avro Lancaster. And for more exciting historical content, click on your screen and check out another of our Dark Documentaries channels. We publish new videos regularly, so stay tuned.